welcome to the podcast studio. I know it's your first time. Um, I appreciate you inviting me on to your podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yep. This is Gina Swearingen, uh, top producer, real estate agent in the local area. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself? Um, well, I only came here because you said you had a sommelier on staff. We do. <laughs> we call him Mike. <laughs> Very nice. Get it right. Or we learn. That's fine. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> It's all over the table. Yep. All right. Who hired this guy? It's okay. We'll clean it up. <laughs> uh, that's it, Mike. Thank you, man. We uh, we appreciate that. Great job. <laughs> Good help is hard, hard to find. I will tell you that. Um, why don't you go ahead and actually tell us about yourself? Yeah. Okay. So um, I was born and raised here in Ormond. Thank you. He's not about the best, but, but we love him. Uh, so yeah, born and raised in Ormond. Um, I've lived here my whole life, so that makes that makes the job a lot easier for sure. Um, I started in real estate in 2019, so it's hard to believe it's been five years. Rumor is that you hit the ground running, though. Yeah, I was super busy from the start. I'm definitely really grateful. I think living here my whole life has helped. You know, I have... A big sphere. My yeah. parents have lived here since they were 14, so I've got their sphere too. And um, yeah, I love What was your first sale? My first sale was actually a $95,000 home in Astor, Florida. Mm. Yep, it belonged to my uncle. I don't even know where that is. Yep, it's 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 out west, 40. Um, but yeah, so my first day that I got my license, he called me. He's like, you want to sell a house for me? So that was my first listing. How long did it take to get under contract? Days. Yeah. You didn't do video? No. <laughs> no, no video? No. No video. video. Okay. All right. Well, you know, obviously we're going to talk about your progression yeah. and uh, who you are, what you do. Um, we worked with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. We definitely appreciate your business. We've done a lot of cool things, definitely um, in the video realm, marketing realm, the whole thing. And you've done a lot of stuff on your own as well. Like your brand is is really getting out there. And I mean, people are seeing it. So that's got to mean you're doing something right. Thank you. You're welcome. You, know, you really started from the bottom and now you're here, you know. Like Drake. <laughs> Just like Drake. Uh, shout out Drizzy. Um, <laughs> so with that being said, let's kind of talk about your experience with your marketing, where it went, where it was. Like we, we want to know the whole thing. The whole thing. All the dirt. Yeah, and I mean, when I first started, like you said, I got busy really quickly. So I didn't really have like a time where I sat down and like made a marketing plan. Um, I just just got busy with sales. So I, I, I never actually like sat down and did that. So in the beginning, it was super basic, right? Like just photos, text content, nothing really impressive. Um, but as I grew as an agent my you know I like I had a different level of customer and then they had a different level of, of expectation from me definitely especially as a listing agent um because you're that listing is mostly marketing so I did a lot of my own content at first you know just using my cell phone like whatever I could get my hands on and then as I progressed in my career I realized I needed to do more um and just start investing in my marketing really so you know, I looked around on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and just found a couple other agents that I really looked up to and I noticed what they were doing and every one of them was doing video. Yeah. Um, so then I looked into companies that were doing that and doing a good job um, that could help me progress in that realm. And obviously, here you are. Um, we sort of like grown together. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So it's been a long time. So yeah, what's what's up with you? How'd you, where'd you come from? Uh, you know? Well, I am also born and raised here, so it's kind of like that sort of big fish, small pond mm -hmm. kind of feel to it, which is really cool. I mean, that's helped tremendously just to have that sort of networking at your disposal. Yeah. Kind of gives you that sort of head start. Um, with like this whole creative thing, it kind of, 
I don't know. It was out of like necessity. I mean, we were like, I was killing myself, got all the way up to like GM at a restaurant. I was like, this is just not it. Mm -hmm. Randomly picked up a camera, um, which was like seven years ago. But fast forwarding how I got to like here, I started doing weddings and okay. then, and then COVID hit and I had to give back all these deposits, you know, everything was like, what's going on? You know, it was just a wild time. And I'm a big advocate of like, you know, just the right place, right time. And being in Florida at that moment where a friend of mine handed off a real estate portfolio to me and I took on his customers and I still use some of them to this day. And the market just came with that and it just boomed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like, you know, word of mouth in this town is, is very, very strong. Yeah. And that's strictly where we're at at this moment. But it was really cool um, to see the growth, to, you know, be a part of the the trends, mm -hmm. you know, because we really took like a, a, like an under a microscope. You know, we wanted to look different. We wanted to, you know, deliver things that people see in big markets, like the people you follow. Right. You know, that aren't necessarily here. And it's paid dividends, you know, with you included. Um I think we kind of got into it to maybe give people like an ROI, you know, like we want to make sure that we hand you a video that's going to have a return on your investment. Right. That's so important. You know, and I think we've pretty much gotten to a point where we've kind of done that, but yeah, that's kind of how it all sort of blossomed and happened. It just kind of accidentally fell in your lap and then the timing of the market and the need for what we do, especially even today. I mean, it's nonstop. Yeah. Yeah, you, you've seen it. Yeah, especially COVID, the real estate market during the COVID years were, that's the craziest we've seen in decades. So that worked out. I didn't know what I was doing then. I was just running yeah. through the house with like a flash, like pop, 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 pop. Yeah. You know, doing like five a day. Mm -hmm. And then I look back, I'm like, these are interesting. Yeah. Yeah. How have you seen like your personal development in your videos, you know, where, what have you seen that has helped you in your, in your, the short time that you've been doing it? Because it's probably only been, what, two years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with, with video. Yeah. So, like, I have a greater following, like, quantity-wise and quality-wise. And, like, the quality is even more important to me than than quantity. So I just have kind of, like I said, like, a different level of, um, like, customer base now that's following me. They're the people who have a higher expectation of their agents. So they're 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 easily weaving. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of agents in our area. Right. You know, so it just has made it easier for them to weed those ones out and pick ones that meet their expectations. Um, so there's that. And then like, I realized I was actually doing my taxes this year and I looked at you how- not normally do your taxes? I do. I do them every year, like a week before they're due. Um, but no. So I realized how much I actually spent because I was actually able to quantify just my marketing. Mm -hmm. And it was ridiculous what I was spending. And well- not what I was spending, but if you look at what I was making from that marketing on like mailers and Facebook ads and Google ads and whatever I was doing before video, it it wasn't paying me back. Right. So that was just money just gone. Um, so now I'm still spending the same amount of money, but on something different on video, you know, right. with, with you. Um, and I'm seeing a huge return. Yeah. So a good example would be, I think we talked about it at some point. Mm -hmm. I had that seller reach out to me. They were interviewing three agents. I did not pay her to say this. This is a real story. <laughs> Go ahead. This seller reached out to me, and um, they were interviewing th three agents, um, luxury luxury seller, mm -hmm. and they specifically asked me for examples of my photos and videos that I used to market my listings. So I sent them links to some of the stuff that we have done in that in the luxury market, and um, I got the listing right away. Because that was that was what was most important to them, yeah. which is, you know, that's common with that level of seller. So I think if you do the math, it was what I spent with you on one video that got me that listing was 5% of what I what I made right. on that sale. For so those who can't math, that's 20x. Tw 20 times, yeah. So, I mean, that, that one video essentially paid me back 20 times. And right. what I made on that one sale can pay for... A year's worth of video so it's it's an it was a no-brainer to me well that's like it's funny that we we talk about like the trends like you know i don't know what goes on in your world mm -hmm. per se then you don't know what goes on in my world per se we just trust each other that we know right. and but being in the in the um 
you know, this realm of real estate, you start learning things and working with a lot of the top producers, I have seen so many people double down on the fact that they bring it to their sellers and they say, Hey, this is what I'm going to offer you. Mm -hmm. You can go with Joe Schmo there, you know, but I'm going to put it in front of more people. Right. That's so, I mean, it's rewarding and, but that's also our, our, our initial goal was, you know, to make sort of like within respect to Daytona, like viral content, mm -hmm. you know, like we want people to see it. We want people to share it. We want a lot of eyes on it because we not only feel like if you have more eyes on it, that's more potential to sell it, mm -hmm. but we also just feel that those are more people that might want your service. Right. You know, so you're, you're getting out there even more in the upfront cost. It should, it should be that, that you should get it back. Right. You know, tenfold, mm -hmm. you know, 20 fold, whatever, you know, then that's, I don't know. It's been kind of interesting to watch people do that and pivot because you don't, you know, once we make the video, you know, we're, we're so busy, like we're on to the next one, we're ready to go, you know, and the fact that there's still more use than just posting it is one of the things I don't think people understand. Right. You know, or maybe they just haven't tried or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Like that one, so one listing video that you make for me, it's not like that's just a one-time use and I'm just going to use that to sell that one house. I can use it for content in other areas, right? And I can also use it to market myself. So marketing your listing is marketing yourself, which is so important as an agent. Right. We've had a lot of uh, people, I mean, even yourself included, probably text us and be like, the seller loved it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's kind of an enjoyable process. Yeah. To like go through, have a really nice video and, you know, get that sort of, you know, gratification, if you will, of doing my job correctly. Right. And it just kind of irons out. To somebody who like you, you know, from A to Z, you're going to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. And to have us come in and you depend on us and trust us to do, you know, whether it's B, C, all the way to, you know, X or Y. Right. You know, we cover that end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's a it's a good relationship and yeah. it's been fun doing it, to be honest. Yeah. You know, I know that we have a lot more ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, she literally bombards my Instagram <laughs> with videos. Examples. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's Two do in the this. morning. I'm like, no, let me sleep. Let me sleep. Uh, <laughs> super proud of, of you and everything you've done. I mean, it's really cool. I feel the same about you. Thank you. I think there's a, um, sort of like uncharted territory. And we talk about this all the time, like the different types of videos you can do. Right. Mm -hmm. And this goes along with the, you know, the stuff that you bombard me on with Instagram. You see all different types of people doing stuff. Um, I kind of want you to explain the, you know, maybe somebody who doesn't know like what your, your, your goals are, you know, with the video marketing, well, just all the different things that you can do. Yeah. I mean, I think if people think of real estate, like on the surface video, video marketing for realtors, it would be their listings, right? Like mm -hmm. look at this house I'm selling. It's so great. You should buy it. It's yeah. not just that. It's so much deeper than that. Oh, I mean, most realtors, that's all they do, right? But if you want to stand out and be different and grow, you have to think outside the box and do different kinds of content. So like educational, it's right. going to be a big one for me coming up. 100%. Just educating, you know, buyers, sellers, um, other realtors even. And I don't even mean to interject, but like who wouldn't want to work with somebody that, you know, he not necessarily makes them better. I'm thinking from a real estate perspective, but like as a client, that just builds trust. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay, I trust that person. Right. She so knows it what she trust does. and also like just, just exposure, right? So like what is that statistic? Like they have to see you seven like you have to have seven different right. touch points or something before right. somebody actually trusts, you know, 100%. so they can use you professionally. So there's that. Um, you know, like the TikTok style, like things that right. just draw people's attention to you. Right. It's not necessarily like marketing a listing or you. It's just right. yeah. it's an attention grabber. Yeah. To get people to look through your content. I would say it's almost like a formula. You yeah. Know? There's uh, there's times that people want to see, like in our, our industry, they want to see us putting together the set. You know, mm -hmm. we'll probably get more views of us walking through how to set these lights up and everything than maybe, you know, my if I did a podcast by myself. You right. Know? Um, there's times where people want to see your family, your, you know, who you are as a person. It's, I use this phrase all the time, they, it's humanizing yourself. Yeah. I think people are like naturally curious. Mm -hmm. So when you do that kind of like behind the scenes content or whatever you want to call it, like that's going to pique their interest enough to 
click beyond your video into your profile and actually look at the content that you want them to look at. Right. And, you know, even like the, from the aspect of like selling a home, like anytime that we go and do a video for you, you know, you're taking videos of us doing the video, mm -hmm. you know, because it's in planning and that in people's minds like, hey, this is coming. Right. You know, but it's it's those small extra steps and learning when to do it that, I mean, we could go literally all day on this. But yeah. there's so much more than putting up a listing video, crazy transitions, and like calling it a day. There is a lot to it. But then like alternatively, like we've also talked about, a lot of agents I feel like avoid it because they think it is too much for them yeah. or they're not going to be good at it or whatever. Right. Um, I knew one. That was me. I know. I, I knew, I knew, I knew that was one. definitely me. But like you actually inspired me like to just do it, right? Like you don't have to be the best at it. You have to just do it. I didn't wear my Nikes today. <laughs> it was. You know, but no, I mean, I, I, I believe in every single one of my clients. It doesn't matter. I swear it does not matter who you are. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to put in the time, like we are 100% about it. Yeah. Like we get hype for this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's in our blood. Like we just want to go out and make bangers and, but we also want to treat you right. And we want to make sure that like you understand that there is a little bit of work to put in. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the people who are just born talent, you know, that they're out there. But mm -hmm. there's so much to be said about people who just have work. Mm -hmm. And I think like you being excited about it helps me feel more comfortable behind the camera. I think you call me like your biggest cheerleader. Like you are. You're a hype man. Hype man. Sure. Hype man. I think yeah. it sounds a lot better than cheerleader for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. You guys all are. You All you guys are so good to me. No, it's true. We enjoy it though. I mean, your success is, you know, our success. Mm -hmm. We We share in it. You know, when we hear that, you know, you're, turning around these videos and like, you know, you're getting more of the clients that you want, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that speaks volume to us. Right. And, you know, I don't necessarily mean this in a bad way, but it's like, we talked about this earlier. If, you know, you're just starting out, you don't have, you don't know where you want to go. Like we might not be a good fit. Like there is no one cure all video that's gonna, you know, get you to the next uh, step or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's a commitment. It's consistency. It is. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen it firsthand. Yeah. That's a good point. Like consistency is everything, mm -hmm. right? Like I said, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be like the best of the best. Um, you have to just, just do it and just be consistent with it. And I think that's where you're going to really help me because we can actually schedule, you know what I mean? Like, right. like every week or every month or whatever it ends right. up being. And we can pre-plan our content and we can batch it. And it's going to help. It's going to help me a lot on efficiencies. Right. We want to help you like where you need to put it. Mm -hmm. How we shoot it is important. You know, right, like vertical, vertical right. horizontal, what, you know, where what, to put it, what to do with mm -hmm. it. Exactly. And there's a lot of thought that goes into it that a lot of people, we don't want them not to worry about it, but we also want to make them aware of like the, the extra steps. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why so-and-so is this price, things like that. We're not going to retire anytime soon. We just really, really want to give you the best product possible. And that's something that we felt like was kind of a void. Yeah. You know, that we wanted to fill. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of where we're at with it. I mean, it's just exciting. Every day is like something new. Yeah. You know. So I have a question for you. Is there a difference in like vertical versus horizontal? Because we've shot them both ways, right? Like right. to you, like, uh, I, is there one that's better than another or? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say there's one that's better than another. It's a use case. Mm -hmm. You know, where you use it is where you're going to get the most out of it. You know, if you're shooting horizontal video, you need to put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, even your LinkedIn campaigns, like people don't really think about like the extra, all this stuff that's out there. I mean, when you shoot, whether it is vertical or horizontal, there has to be a purpose, you know, yeah. like that really, really, um, exciting video that we just shot um, of the one in Norman. Yep. We we shot that horizontal because we wanted it to be like a presentation piece. Mm -hmm. You know, we want people to see that and be able to relate with it and be like, oh, wow, like this is a presentation. Like this is a movie. Yeah. You know, the, the other stuff we've done, the vertical, that's all for social. Facebook, Instagram. I mean, obviously Instagram, their algorithm is based off vertical content. Right. Like, they're going to push it more. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that if you have an awesome video, like people aren't going to watch it. Mm -hmm. You know, the there's different times and places for it. And sometimes we might even do like a vertical cut. Yeah, I was going to say, can't you do like a, a long form that's horizontal and then right. 
cut it into shorts for us or for your customers to use. Yeah. There's, there's, um, so many things that you can do. And it's funny because real estate, sometimes like the house is like when you cut them vertical, mm-hmm. I shouldn't even say this, but you know, it's just, a, you, you lose a little bit. Yeah. You know, the, the width of like the grandness of the house mm-hmm. sometimes. When I piece together horizontal videos, I just, I'm like, man, I love this. It's like a whole new level. I yeah. agree. Yeah, when you did that one for me in Ormond, I was like, wow, this is super, super nice. It was yeah. like cinematic. Yeah, and like you do vertical and it's like, oh, you know, like I want to jump out of my seat, like let's go. Yeah. You know, like I just watch a boxer get knocked out. Yeah, something. But yeah. There's just something to be said, like, you know, that there's no wrong way, mm-hmm. but understanding, if I could help anybody understand what to do with it, then I'm doing my job. Yeah. But you also have to understand what I'm saying, I guess, if I might be wording it wrong, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you, how many people just hit us up and are like, just do what you do. This is. I'm like, wow, well, you know, you kind of have to understand their goals. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, know what, what with to you, give them, you know? Yeah. And that, that's like this long term goal here is all the content that you want to do, you know, we're going to be able to do it for you. We're going to be able to store it for you. We're going to be able to, you know, take these videos down the road and repurpose them. And there's just a lot of exciting stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited for you. You know, we talked about all the different types of videos and like where they could be, what you can do with them, and then just the understanding of it. But I think that there's something that's a little misunderstood and which is like the power of video. Oh yeah, totally. So there's actually a statistic I just read and it was that um, video content gets 1200% more shares on social media platforms than text and, and photo. Wow. So that's huge. It's like in a whole nother world. Yeah. I mean, that's the world we live in. Mm-hmm. You know, that I did, I had no idea that that was that big of a number. You know, that's incredible. What is really funny, you know, in my own personal experience is we did a, a video where uh, for Bill Navarro where we had him throw the drone up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it got a ton of reach. Mm-hmm. And we ended up getting called by a, um, a pressure washing company, Leo Perez, mm-hmm. great guy. He randomly calls us and he's like, hey, I saw your video. And then I saw all your other videos. I want you to do the same thing for my pressure washing company. Like, how did you find us? He's like, no, nobody told me. I just saw your video. Mm-hmm. So, it, and that's like, you know, a small example of, you know, these videos have reach, more reach than we think. Oh, yeah. You know, and then that paycheck, you know, we combine with the other, they're paying for themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a domino effect. Yeah. And like, even the people who don't reach out, right? Like, he's one of, you know, thousands and thousands of people who have now seen that. And you're in their mind now where mm-hmm. you might not have been before, right? From one video. Same thing. I mean, for real estate, Mm -hmm. those buyers, or I mean those, well, buyers too, but you know, buyers or sellers that might be on the fence, they're like, oh, look at what Gene is doing. Yeah. That was so cool. Yeah. I think that the camera just went through a window. (laughs) Yeah, right? How did she do that? (laughs) I didn't. Adam did. (laughs) But it's all part of your brand. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I mean, there's a lot of different use cases for different types of videos. Mm -hmm. And speaking of different types of videos, I could go all day, but I really... I really like the way that you put it. Yeah, I will. I will. I promise. Um, What are like some of the different types of videos that you can do for like your listing? So lately I've been trying to focus on like lifestyle instead of just the listing. So what's the difference? So like when I first started, I was focusing on the basics. Like this is how many bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. Like this is the city that the home is in. Yeah. When I'm trying to just like elevated a little bit more into like, this is what it would feel like if you lived in this home, right? Or if you walked this neighborhood or if you lived in this city and you guys, you and your husband wanted to go on a date night, like this is where you would go eat. Yeah. Um, That's a lot of like, we were talking about the, like the, the, the agents that I follow as inspiration, Mm -hmm. they're sort of doing that too. So I think that's kind of where video marketing is going. Um, it's just more of a lifestyle versus listing mentality. And that's a great point. You know, lifestyle, something I kind of like sort of call community videos too. Mm-hmm. I mean, the funny thing is, is that the lifestyle could be, you know, on the beach, you know, not necessarily a community, but like a community could be like an Ormond, mm-hmm. you know, and that honestly probably helps you out a lot. Oh yeah, totally. Like, you know, we talked a lot about my progression as an agent. So like in the beginning, my mentality was, oh, they're moving. Most people are moving from one city in Florida to my city in Florida. 
you have to think bigger than that. They're moving from different states, from different countries. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that, like, just because I grew up in Ormond and I know everything about Ormond, most other people don't. Right. Um, so you're really having to do that, like tap into the communities and the restaurants and the parks and rec and the beaches and all the things. That way, if someone's in, you know, Europe and they want to relocate to Florida or retire to Florida, you know, they don't even have to come here to know what we offer. It's like you becoming know? an expert in your field. Well, yeah, that's the goal. That's the ultimate goal, of course. You know, you're able to steer and drive people to their destination mm -hmm. in so many words, you know, figuratively. Yeah. And probably literally, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, ju I just think that that is sort of a, a missed, um, not opportunity, I guess a missed opportunity because some people haven't done it yet. But, you know, if, if I had any kind of advice for somebody, it, it would be to start thinking, you know, bigger than like what you said. Right. House. Yeah. And like what we're talking about, like efficiency for realtors specifically. So you don't have to make like one video for your listing and one video for the beach and one video for Washington Oak State Gardens, right? Like right. you and I could be shooting something in Palm Coast and we incorporate that into that video. That way I can reuse that same video for multiple different posts. Right. And they might be a longer, you know, time on site or things like that. But if it, if you're worried about ROI, like that is like the premise of it. I mean, if you're going to spend more time, you probably are going to expect to make more money. I mean, if you're really putting your expertise, you know, all your eggs in that basket, then it's going to take more time. It's going to, but it's also going to, you know, the fruits of your labor, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're putting in more work, hopefully you're getting more work out of it. Right. And I think that if you took examples of like Coast, Fort Orange, New Smyrna, I mean, if you became known experts in that, in those, any city, I just, I, can't fathom that people wouldn't flock to you. So here's sort of a sensitive subject. Oh, God. I think you already know where I'm going with this, but the NAR decision. Oh, God. Yeah. Can you put it in layman's terms for people like me, Pedro, and Mike? Yeah. So, I mean, I could go on forever about this, but the short and condensed, condensed version would be that there was a group of home sellers uh, that came together and they initiated a lawsuit basically saying that uh, the fact that realtors were paid the way that they are um, where a seller pays their listing agent and that is shared as a co-broke to the buyer's agent right. was artificially inflating home prices. Okay, Here, here's a question though. Does, who, who does that affect? That's a great question. It depends on who you ask. If you ask me, I think, um, of course, it affects realtors, right? So that affects us and that um, it changes our pay structure. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think it affects the buyer. Um, buyers, at least in the price point that most realtors service, don't have the extra cash on top of their down payment and their closing costs. They don't have an extra two or three or three and a half or whatever people are charging to pay their buyer's agent. I mean, most people are using down payment assistance and closing cost assistance, and they just don't have that. Right. So I think it's going to it's going to really limit a lot of buyers ability to, to buy a house. Um, so do you think it's going to affect like first time home buyers? I definitely think it's going to affect affect first time because buyers. Because from what I understand, they're almost given like that um, that push financially to get to that level to purchase a home. When Oh, yeah. It's hard enough to save for your down payment, let alone your closing costs. And then if you have to pay your agent for representation, it's it just it's just another barrier. So the other option would be to go directly to the listing agent. Um, and the way that would affect a listing agent is if they can't pay a buyer's agent, how are they going to pay a listing agent? You know, so right. the big question in our industry is, are we going to have to work for free? You know, yeah. um, what happens to the buyers who can't, can or won't pay a buyer's agent? So I think overall, it's really most negatively affecting the, the buyer, right? You so need the, representation. Right. That's the thing. So like as a listing agent, my question is now, okay, so if the buyer can't pay their agent, they come to me directly. Is the expectation of me to work for, for free for that buyer? And then on top of that, you know, it's very difficult to represent both a buyer and seller. Right. I think it's it's almost impossible to be impartial to two different parties right. in a transaction. And in Florida, we're actually called transaction brokers. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. You don't actually represent any one person. You're representing a transaction. But right. 
I think ethically and morally, it's difficult for most good agents to yeah, represent I mean, both sides. That's a perfect segue into what I've researched a little bit about, which is, you know, the veteran loans. Mm -hmm. Like the VA loans, I just can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, I mean, as it stands right now, um, anyone utilizing a VA loan is not legally allowed to pay, to give money or pay their buyer's agent. So there's going to have to be, I mean... I don't know how they're going to do it this quickly because the NAR settlement, like that, that is effective like mid July, I think they're announcing. So the VA is going to have to act pretty quickly and figure out how that's going to work for them because of all buyers, those are the ones that we really need to take care of, I think. Right. No, 100%. And then, you know, not to take away from any, any other sort of, you know, first time home buyers or anything like that. A good quote I heard a long time ago is, you know, you need buyers because buyers become sellers. Yeah. Yeah, especially for so like with, especially now that the whole NAR lawsuit is in place, agents are starting to focus more on sellers, right? Because with a seller, you're guaranteed to get paid. With a right. buyer, it's kind of up in the air, right? So we're having to like get these buyer broker agreements, right? You know, this is kind of questionable whether they're going to have the money or if our our buyer pool is going to diminish. So I mean, could you imagine going through an inspection without a realtor? No. Yeah. Could you imagine now? Be like, uh, yeah, that wall looks kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or having to trust someone else's realtor, essentially. Right. Right. So like right. meeting someone who has for three or four months been building a relationship with a seller and then expecting them to be impartial to you is, it's tough. Yeah. You know? I agree. So yeah, we're, a lot of us that, you know, a lot of realtors talk about this. It's, it's like the big thing in our world. So a lot of us are starting to focus our efforts, our marketing efforts, you know, video specifically, like this is LIGL on sellers, like capturing right. seller leads because you're guaranteed to get paid there, right? And that, like, the NAR settlement doesn't affect that part of our of our job. Right. So there is actually a statistic that 73% of home sellers prefer to use an agent that utilizes video to market their property. I believe it. So. I believe that might even be a little low. Yeah. No, I, I think so too. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm biased, but <laughs> what's not important is like what might happen, what could happen, even what should have happened. It's kind of like we have to live in the now. Yeah. And I think it almost makes us, the creators, more important. You, you're you at a, uh, a fork in the road to where you need to commit one way, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of gray area in between there. But at the end of the day, you have to market your properties in a professional way to stand out these days. Yeah, and you have to like keep up with change too. So like, right. you know, at one point it was, professional photography is all you need and yeah. then a couple of decades later it's well now everyone has to use drone you have to have drone it's the thing yeah. and now it's video right and it's just going to progress so i think a lot of people say to me like oh you're young and you're techie so that's why you're good at that i'm like right. well you know i'm i'm not that young anymore and I'm, i don't consider myself super techie but i put the right people in the right places and i keep up with the trends and that i think that is what's really important and it's the same exact fold on our side mm -hmm. you know the the old heads that you know do uh the camera worker you know, oh well you know you have youtube now stuff like that and then yeah. it's part is true but you know it's also the commitment to stay on top of things yeah you know, the want the need um i don't know i think we skipped the phase like the whole uh a headshot that makes you like 20 years younger thing yeah. that, yeah. that was a big thing for a while yeah like, it's still a thing. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's good. That's good. I don't want it to go away. <laughs> um, I like surprises. But with video, I can't, you know, obviously we're super thankful that you've used us and we've both grown, but I really can't preach it enough of the world that we're looking towards in the future. You know, let us help you. Let us, you know, guide you and, and have that commitment on both sides. Yeah. You know, because that's something that we talked about and harped on. It's like, you got to commit, mm -hmm. you know. So I want to thank you, Gina Swearingen. Thank you. Oh. I just actually learned that I've been saying your last name wrong. I never corrected you. For years. In your defense. It's, it's crazy. So what? honestly, thank you. We're proud of you. Thank you. And we look forward to, um, you know, working together even more. Thank you so much. And getting you more, uh, more buyers and sellers. Sellers. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll take both, but... Yeah. Wes. Oh, that's good.